What's going on guys? Welcome back to WDYDCSP. What do you do as a central stove processor? Guys, today we're going back to basics in the prep and pack side with laparoscopic instruments, guys. Back to basics. So what are we doing with laparoscopic instruments over in the prep and pack side? Well, guys, these aren't like regular instruments. These actually require a lot more work. And let me show you. So what are you doing with laparoscopic instruments over in the prep and pack side? Well, first, your first and quickest test, guys. This is the simplest to let you know if this sheath is any good. First, I mean, I'm sorry, let me let me back up real quick. First of all, guys, make sure you have all the components to your instruments. It'll make life easier. Trust me on this. Next is your easiest test for your laparoscopic sheath. Grab your sheath, place it on a flat surface, and try to pull that insulation back. If that insulation backs off and you see metal on the distal end of this instrument when you do it and it moves, automatically this instrument goes out for repair and you need a replacement. Simplest inspection, quickest, and one that's often forgotten. Okay, the next thing, guys, is you want to do a visual inspection, a feel inspection. You want to feel the shaft of this instrument, right? You want to feel for any nicks or any cracks or any, like, cuts in the uh, insulation, right? That's the quickest way. Get your lighted magnification. Go along the shaft here. Look at that insulation. Make sure that you're turning your instrument, guys. And again, distance means something. Okay, if you're this far off, you're blurry. If you're this far on, if you're on here like this, you get a nice clear picture, right? Learn how to use your magnifiers, guys. Okay, go along the whole shaft here. Inspect that. Okay, when you get to the um, base here, there is actually... An adhesive that um, hides or covers that rubber gasket in that water seal gasket there. That adhesive right there should not be cracked, pulling away from the base, um, damaged of anything, chipped or anything like that. If it is, this instrument goes out for repair. The port shouldn't be cracked or anything like that. So check the port out. Look for cracks. Look for holes in there. Look for any damages in that port, guys. It'll use your lighted magnification as well on that one especially especially on the base here so you guys can't see it here but on the light and magnification there's actually a crack right there where the port's at and the base there is a crack right there this instrument's bad okay where the handle connects onto the shaft this actually screws onto the port if there's a gap between that stainless steel and that port a significant gap that is a hiding spot for bio burden and it prevents the handle from connecting onto the instrumentation. All right, this little rubber gasket right here actually holds a clip that holds the insert and connects to the handle. If that ring right there is damaged or broken or chipped or anything like that, this instrument is no good as well. Again, your lighted magnification is important in that part. All right, we're going on to the actual insert. Inspect the distal end, the working end with magnification for any cracks, any bio burdens. This shaft should be nice and straight. That little ball end, the little button hook, if this is the type of insert in it, should be straight and not bent, all right? Place that off to the side. The handle, guys, the handle's important. If this is the style handle that you're using, the button should be able to be manipulated. There should be a collar. There's actually a collar around that button. That collar should be intact. There's a screw there. Please make sure that screw isn't backed out. It should be nice and flimsy. It shouldn't be raggedy or rattling, but it should be. It should open and close with little effort. The spin collar should spin freely. It shouldn't be hard to spin this thing. Take a look down that shaft to make sure that it's nice and clear. Same thing with your insert. Going back to your insert, you want to point this downwards and see if you can look straight down that shaft. If it's nice and clear, you're probably in the clear. What's your next inspection, guys? Well, if you've seen my boroscope video, you know the boroscope's up next. So you want to inspect the internal lumen with that boroscope. But guess what, guys? What if you don't have a boroscope? Oh, wow. We're going to trust the decon people, right? And I wish that was the case. And I'm not saying our decon people do a bad job. I'm not saying that I do a bad job, but something can be missed. You know what I mean? So the inspection part, that's part of the inspection in the prep and pack for cleanliness, function, and any damages, right? 
But if you don't have a borescope, you can't just look down the shaft and be like, oh, that's all good. You can use a syringe and stall water, guys. You can go ahead and attach this to a port, okay? Line a trash can or your corner of the workstation away from your instruments with a white absorbent liner. You're gonna flush this instrument several times. Make sure that you hold the one end so the water doesn't splash back on you. Hold one end and you're gonna flush this several times over that non-lint, over that white lint uh, liner to make sure that you don't see any specks or any blood or any bio burden whatsoever. Please do not use saline and do not use alcohol. Alcohol will actually dry up the bio burden or coagulate any blood into that surface and make it difficult to remove. What if you don't have a policy with syringe? All right, get ready to jump on me, guys. I'm an advocate of brushes. If you don't have a boroscope, then brushes can be used, should be able to be used on the clean side for inspection but you must have a strong policy written around that. The easiest way to get the monkeys off your back with this, where are my lean people at? Where is the 5S people at? Brushes come in different colors and styles, okay? Even the bristles come in different colors. One thing that you can do is designate white brushes for cleaning and decon and blue bristle brushes for inspection purposes only in the prep and pack side. But here's a tip. If you're inspecting with the blue bristle brush and you come out and you happen to see bio burden, do not remove that brush from the instrument. Send the instrument and the dirty tray back to Decon. Back in Decon, it is important that you do not clean with the inspection brush. The inspection brush is removed in Decon discard it and you clean with the designated cleaning brush that is a way around that policy there next guys what you have next your next test is your um your insulation testing uh, i have to fix i gotta get a new wire this one's all beat up i tried to fix it a little bit but um it's still a little loose there but i'll, I'll get it but anyway you want to go ahead and anchor your it anchor your your metal, okay, when you anchor your metal, you wanna go ahead and you wanna test the entire length of your instrument, guys, all right? If anywhere along this shaft fails, the instrument needs to go out for repair, okay? I get into so many debates that if it fails at the base, that is still good. No, it's not good, okay? Anywhere along that insulation where there is a beep, it's a failure. All right, the reason being is that we don't only protect the patient, we protect the users, and the users can get burnt in this, this side of the instrument. So anywhere along that shaft is a failure. So you did your visual inspection, you did your magnification, you did your boroscope or your brush or your flush, you did your insulation testing. What next? I'm done, right? Nope, you ain't done. The next thing, guys, is you want to assemble your instrument to test the functionality. What's the point of making sure that the instrument is clean if it don't work? So place your, uh, put your instrument together, okay? And you wanna make sure that your instrument work, okay? Everything snaps on together, everything is good. And if you have a laparoscopic scissor, you need to test the scissor. And how do you do that? You use a tissue paper, guys. If you only have a single ply, you have to test it with a two ply. How do you make a two ply? Fold it in half, right? Now you have two ply tissue paper. And okay, grab it on the folded end. Go ahead, the first third of your scissor, you wanna go ahead and cut and pull. Cut and pull, it should be no snags and no jagged edges there. Lastly, guys, is you assembled it. Now you have to disassemble it to pack it for sterilization. Be familiar with your different laparoscopic instruments because they all don't go together the same way. And some people struggle with that. Practice makes perfect. Education is the key. All right, guys, as always, stay true to yourselves. Keep it 100. Continue educating yourselves. And until next time, peace.